think this time um, we're going to begin with 2 Corinthians 5, but we're actually going to read something there. Because <clears throat> I think last time I just had you turn there and then we didn't. <laughs> and so we're going to refer to the Bible this time. <clears throat> you know, Jim and John, y'all look very Hawaiian in your shirts. Yeah, that's where they went. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> and I want to read verse 18 first. Are you ready? And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, so we've been talking about reconciliation and this is um, within the Redemption Truths class. This is uh, the number two class entitled Reconciliation Based on Kind. And we've been talking about being after his kind. We've been talking about of um, to not embrace truths or teachings, but to get past all of that and really just, you know, quit trying to measure up and do all these things. The rec this reconciliation has done something that eliminates all of that as a religious form, and it makes it a faith form based fully on union with Christ. <clears throat> And that's what verse 18 says. Uh, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Um, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> I'll draw a little chart of that uh, here in just a little bit. But the reconciliation is with God. through being in Christ. God was in, in Christ reconciling us to himself. What is that, verse 21 or something? Let's see. No, that's uh, uh, the next verse. And to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. <clears throat> All right. So I think one of the minor adjustments that some people have to make, not everybody, but they have to begin to start think, start thinking according to the way this is worded and according to the way that Jesus did it. Um, and that is that in truth the reconciliation is to God through Christ. But there are there's some mechanics of that that we'll get into later. <clears throat> All right, so... Um, in the, the, the last paragraph I read in our last class so that I can get to the next paragraph was this, that, um, that the results of a change in kind have result, resulted in spiritual death, which is separation from God due to kind. You know, if we could just say that, you know what I mean? If we could see that and say that, that spiritual death is not just separation from God. It's separation from God due to kind. That the fallen creation of Adam became in the Garden of Eden another kind than what he is. And the sin that took place there wasn't a moral or mortal sin in the sense of what we call mortal sins, murder, rape, you know, blasphemy, uh, evil uh, of all sort of nature, all on that line. It was a sin of, of changing kind. And as such, <clears throat> it began this long process of God trying to reconcile us back to himself. You see that in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, where he talks about, for he hath redeemed us to himself. 
I mean, I remember the first time I read that, read it, you know, really saw it, not read it with my eyes, but saw it. And I went, oh, my God, I never, uh, up to that moment, I never thought in terms of redeeming us to himself. It was always redeeming us from hell. And I, it's things like that that would grab my heart and make me, and shake me and say to me, you are reading into the scriptures instead of reading the scriptures. And I considered that a big deal in my heart, that you, you don't do that, you know? You don't do that. Just because religiously you've been taught something, don't blame those people. You've read this scripture a hundred times. You, now you need to read it and respond from your heart, God wanted to redeem us back to him as his kind. <clears throat> All right. So to change these, uh, these different things that are the result of a kind change, of, of a change of our kind, uh, if we change from one kind, the fallen kind, to Christ which is another kind, but it's, it's not another kind. It's Christ who is other. It's not a change from one kind to another kind. No, you change from one kind, the fallen race of Adam, to union with Christ, which is another kind. The emphasis being reconciliation is a participation in Christ. It is not a a theology of how to change kinds. It's incredibly important wording because it, it describes the true path to reconciliation. And we wonder why people have, have heard and studied and know all of this stuff and still falter and still have a problem uh, with certain things. Maybe it's the specific wording they haven't understood. Not the wording that you understand, but the truth of the wording. And, and that would be, it's not, it's not a doctrine of reconciliation or a technical manual on how reconciliation is brought about. It is reconciliation unto participation into the kind that God is by Jesus Christ. All right. So changing kinds or, or participation in Christ remedies all of those things, all of those separations. You know, all, death on every level, spiritual death or separation from God or physical death in the sense of it, it having any effect eternally on the other side. Uh, eternal separation, eternal punishment. Poof! You're, you're no longer that. You're not that kind. Therefore, you're not responsible for that. You're responsible for the life of Christ. And not first being responsible for the life of Christ in you, but first being responsible to have faith in the reconciliation that made us partakers of Christ without any manifestations first. first. If it's true, and if it's true in you, it'll manifest eventually. But manifestation is never, the very word manifestation implies that whatever is on the other side that produces manifestation will do it automatically and you won't have to do it. It's not, it's not produce or bear in the sense of, you know, like that. It's you manifest what's there. Is that, I mean, you know, we, you know, we get all caught up in that. And, and, and we listen and we listen with with. Fear uh, because we say, well, I'm not of his kind because look how I look or look how I think or look how I whatever. And all of that is garbage. F faith is the only thing that's going to make that bridge. Faith. You're going to have to say, okay, you know what? I choose. Let God be true and let every man be a liar, including me. I'm a liar. I'm going to believe him. You, what you say is true. And that's, that's my truth. And I'll go down with this ship. 
this fellowship with Christ, <laughs> you know, uh, believing that he died to make me one because he wanted me to participate in his life whether manifestation has come or not. Yeah. <clears throat> now, that, what, the way I just worded that is not an excuse to sin or to be cruel to others. Or, it's not that. Uh, my experience when my manifestation hadn't yet caught up with my faith of union in Christ, you know, manifestation is Christ in you, what my experience of not, the manifestation isn't near what my faith was in Christ, was I was grieved. Um, I was, you know, I'm not saying this is the Lord, but I was wanting, Lord, can't you move faster? Can't you, can't you do th bring this forth faster? You know, I mean, part of it is probably that I was worried about what people around me would think. You know, well, he preaches this, but look at him. I'm probably still doing that to this day. <laughs> you know, he preaches this reconciliation, but where's Jesus? Well, I mean, my only hope is Jesus. I don't have a plan B. You know, I mean, you, you remember, who was it? I can't. Was it Coronado or Cortez? One of the one of those guys. They sailed over here, and they were going to take the, you know, what what then was not Mexico City, but is now Mexico City, and it was a uh, um, one of the great Mayan empires, and uh, got over here, and you know, the soldiers were all griping about not having enough food and this and that, and you know, this there's. It's a tough country, and we hadn't even got to the natives. We're going to have to be fighting in war and all this. So he just burned all the ships. Yeah. And something kicks in then. You know, you know God, we, we better do this thing. <laughs> you, know, you can't just sit there and suck your thumb and go, you know, it's like, man, we're, we're in this. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, that's really kind of the faith you got to have. You know what I mean? It's like the cross burned everything, burned all your bridges to your old life. Yeah, yeah, it didn't stay open. You know, the Red Sea opened, it closed after you got to the other side. Yes. Yeah. And that's um, John chapter 2, verse um, 12. That the faith of the operators of God and their faith rests on the blood of the Lamb. So he said, if your faith is that God did an operation on Christ to bring it out from him, then we all have to give time to the other operators of God to the cross. And our faith is that God did an operation, and therefore we have to give time, and not our own. I don't know who wrote that bride book, but they're on to something. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about reading it, so it's about kind then. <clears throat> okay. Well, it is this reality. What she read was in Colossians about the, you know, having a faith. A faith, but it was a faith in an operation. And, you know, that, that bride book is very good along this line because I just go at people who, who uh, speak of themselves and think of themselves as dirt. Mm -hmm. And Eve was never dirt. Adam was. She was never dirt. She was bone of his bone. She was his kind. She is his kind. <clears throat> and... Uh, You know, I mean, I, I went after people who who would uh, who would not. You know, 
It's like Galatians 2.20. I mean, I, we love the scripture Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, the faith of the Son of God. And then the next verse says, I do not make void the grace of God. I am dead. I am not going to void that out with looking at thoughts or feelings or actions that I take and say that's not true. That's a slap in the face of my Jesus, and I don't... I don't want to do that. I love him too much. So I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to stand on the truth. I'm going to stand on the operation of God, that God did an operation on Jesus just like he did on Adam, except for the Adam, as Romans 5 tells us, was a, a shadow of that which was to come. You are, if you're born again, you are now of his kind. And uh, being focused and, in fact, not just focused, being obsessed with what, you know, uh, Christ in us and trying to have that is a wrong focus if you don't have the foundation of being in Christ. It's a wrong focus. You say, well, it's not wrong. No, it's a wrong focus because then you're going to be under condemnation all the time because what do you have? I mean, if I stood Jesus Christ himself up here and me and tried to compare myself to him, it's a wrong focus. I need to see myself in him, not compared and measuring myself by him. <laughs> I get in him any day because I know that I'm a flake apart from him. But with him... He's all those things. I mean, you know, in that sense, I mean, I, I've even got it in the notes here somewhere, way down here, but uh, um, the result of reconciliation is not that we are holy, but we but are joined to him who is the most holy. Amen. All that we were before God, Christ has become. He in his person has made these things unto us. Oh, I'm sorry, all that we were not, I'm sorry. All those things that we were not as we stood before God, Christ has become. He and his person, you know, I don't want to, you know, I can go off on so many things here. You know, I mean, I could preach to you the book of Hebrews again. How many of you know, uh, like three or four weeks ago, the dove rested, the ark rested, and Hebrews was over for me, this newest go-round. Well, three days ago, it started again. <laughs> Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, and started again, and just went crazy. Again, and beyond what I've seen. But, I'm, but it's about his person, and it's about him his person being the surety of these things and nothing else. You, you know, if I, if that, you know, if those were just sounding brass to me where I couldn't get hold of it and it couldn't stir anything in me, I would just rebuke the fool out of the devil. <laughs> And I would, I would say, Lord, that's your precious word, and it belongs to me because I am after your kind Jesus. You died so that I would be this with you at all times, never ceasing. You know, when he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, only one that can mess up here is you leave him. Yes, sir. <laughs> and if you don't, you know. I mean, a long time ago, I used to say, you know what? I waver and you know, up and down at times. But the devil never changes, and Jesus never changes. So I need to decide, you know, who I'm going to be with. You know, I used to say that to myself all the time. I was like, you know, I need to quit wavering here. Jesus doesn't change, and this guy ain't going to change. He's going to keep this up. You know what I mean? You know, the guy with the long tail and the pitchfork. And <laughs> he's not, he doesn't change. He's going to keep at it, and, he's, and if he thinks that I'm going to doubt, he's going to hit me and hit me hard. 
It's when he, you know, he li- you know when he lets up, once he figures out that you, you're, you're not going to change. <laughs> really. You know, but if you go, I'm for the Lord, I'm really for the Lord, and the next day he goes, bam, 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 oh my God, it must not be true, and all this stuff. He goes, all right, we got a good one here, you know what I mean? Hey, let's get some more guys over here, and let's see if we can just beat the fool out of them. So, and, and let's particularly wait, because he'll do this. He'll back off and let you have another really wonderful experience and then hit you immediately just to keep you from never latching on permanently and saying, in the name of Jesus, I am not moving from the cross, from the word, from his heart. I will not be moved from my Jesus. He made it so, and I am tired of fishtailing in this thing. Okay, well, it's faith in the operation of God. It's not, it's not faith in yourself. He never said that, you know. I've heard people say, you know, you know, I heard someone once say, you know, I, I said to God, I have faith in you. And they said, the Lord said back to him, I have faith in you. Well, I don't think so. It would be dumb to have faith in you, you. But if you're talking about the you that's joined to him, then yes, sir. So let's get it clear. And let's have our faith clear. And let's have a formed Christ, not an unformed Christ. You know, I pray till Christ be formed. You know, and people say, I got Jesus in me. Yeah, but he's so unformed, you don't know what weighs up. You know, <laughs> let's, let's get him formed there. Well, I'm saved. I got him in there. Let's get him formed. That's what the scripture says. That, that's Paul's prayer for church people. And that's my prayer for you church people. <laughs> and you got seven months <laughs> to decide if this is what you really want. <clears throat> All right. Somebody, I can hear somebody saying, well, that's blackmail. No, it's just fact. Probably some someday before that time, I'll explain some of my motives. You may be surprised. Um, all right, Jesus removed sin as that condition which was of another kind. Jesus removed the sin that is of a condition of being of another kind. He made us his kind. He joined us to himself. He didn't just clean us up and say, you're my kind. Did you hear that? He did not just clean us up and say, now you're clean, so you're of my kind. No, that, that, all of that has to do with justice and righteousness in relationship to him doing this right. He... What was the wording here? Jesus removed sin as that condition which was of another kind, that which stood in the way of reconciliation. There you have it. Reconciliation must first eliminate the other kind. Hence, the cross. But eliminating the other kind is not reconciliation. Think about it. I want you to think about that thought. Eliminating the kind that is not his kind is not reconciliation. Yes. Sure. Which, you know, he tried that with Noah. (laughs) We came back. Yeah, and, you know, we're like weeds. You know, you, you plant this beautiful garden and you leave it alone just for a little while and these, this other kind starts coming up. Okay, so let's, let's, you know, I mean, I'm not in any rush to get through this. Let's think of, of what we just said. I mean, the, 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 the crucifixion of Christ as he took it, you know, yeah, I mean, it's right here. Guess what? It's verse 21. He who knew no sin was made to be sin that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh, 
just crucifying the, the wrong kind is not reconciliation. We'll even get to that, probably not tonight. We'll get to that in relationship to the mechanics of this thing. The, the, the reconciliation to the Father and the reconciliation, and I'm going to call it that, to the Son are two different things. They require two different things. They're, they're vastly different. Um, and it would be good for us, and we'll, we'll even chart it out so that we can follow that. But... Okay, if I'm going to use some dumb example, which I use dumb examples all the time. If I was the only one of my kind, and you know, that's, that's Jesus. He was the only begotten son until death and resurrection, and then he was the firstborn among many. Many what? Come on. Many of his kind. But he said, as the only begotten Except a corn of wheat falling on the ground to die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Okay, so, so if I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, there's nothing around me that is of my kind. And excuse my weird example, but there's this monkey here. And I go, okay, I'm going to make you my kind. Boom! And then shoot that monkey. Are they my kind now? <laughs> They're just a dead other kind. Okay. Now let's take it out of that realm. Let's put it in the realm of Christ and him crucified. If he's, sitting, if he's the only begotten and he's the only one of his kind on the planet and everybody else's sin and of sin nature and of that different kind taking us all to the cross and killing us all still doesn't make us his kind. I mean, you know, there's more, and we'll, we'll get into that. But don't you think that's an important point to, to get that settled? Because if that's unclear, if that's unclear in our mind, then here's what we'll do. Somebody probably in the room already did it. We will look at, we'll go, okay, the cross is the answer. Well, the cross is the answer, but not, not just the death of the other kind. That is not the answer. There must be more. Now, don't, don't give my answer yet, although they know it, but go ahead. Um, well, what I think is that there are also kind of like, so there has to be life to the world. That's what this whole kind of thing is. It's yeah. not death that brings us to the world. Has, you have to be alive for you to be reconciled. You have to be alive, and, you, and there has to be a kind change. But what is that kind change? Well, we know that that's all wrapped up in the truth of reconciliation. Okay, so before we jump too far ahead, <clears throat> um, <laughs> I love my wording next. It is so randy. It's uh, without defining exactly what being of his kind specifically is like. Anybody recognize that as one of my statements? Without defining exactly what being of his kind specifically is like. Okay, before I say the next part of that statement, why would I say that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because if I give you any sort of an explanation of what that kind is like, you're going to picture something in your mind according to what you already, your understanding of whatever it is. And each person, if they do that, it's going to be a different picture, though we're all sitting here going, Amen. So the best thing to do is not define it and let the Holy Spirit define it for you as we just take the concept of it to the next phase of the rest of that sentence. Without defining exactly what being of his kind specifically is like, let's just say that to be after God's kind is to be of one spirit and one nature with God. Are you okay with that? To be after his kind is to be of one spirit and one nature with God. Okay. All right. So then if that's true, then, then the opposite of that is to not be after his kind is simply what we were before union. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now that's, that's important. That's important. Because 
we can keep this in sort of a, a theological map and say then to not be after his kind is simply being in Adam. But that really doesn't, that doesn't really, it does on one, from one angle that defines it or, or helps us to understand it. But from the other, it, it keeps us safe. But the best way is to say it, it's what you were before union, meaning nobody's Christ. And the closest you'll ever come to it is by union with the one who is, who has that nature. Not a, ch not a change of your nature, but a participation into him who has this nature. Reconciling us unto God in Christ. All right. So, you know, and, and it may seem like, I, you know, well, why do you drag this out? Let me tell you, I think that's a most important point to keep us because the moment we start moving back into some theological map that we think we've got figured out in our mind, we have left participation and we just say, well, it's over there in Adam and over in here in Christ. And if I just believe that theologically, no, there must be a participation or there is no reality. <laughs> That's God's way. That's what the cross did. That's what the resurrection brought about than to, to see it theologically without any reality of the cross or the resurrection, what, what really do you have then? Yikes. Well, you've just gutted the whole truth of Christianity then. All right. So to not be after his kind is simply what we were before union. We say that sin has separated us from God, but that separation is due to becoming another kind than what he is. All right, there's another one. We say that sin has separated us from God. Now, let's be honest. Let's just get a show of hands. How many of you have said that to someone or thought it or taught it? Sin has separated us from God. Good. But, you know, we all should have raised our hand because that's the way we were taught it. And until the Holy Spirit talks to us, you know what I mean? I mean, I've said it. I, we've got it on tape somewhere, I'm sure, you know. <laughs> you know? Uh, that's why I tell you don't listen to me because I'm ever, I'm sorry for the word usage here, I'm ever evolving myself. I'm ever growing into the, you know, grow up in, into him in all things, the scripture says. Grow up into him in all things. And I don't, I yet, I don't yet have all those things formulated into a participation. I have more of those things formulated into what I call the theological map. But I want it all to be oneness with Christ in reality and not stuff in my head that makes me think I know something. All right. So we say that sin has separated us from God. Okay. Let me, let me just say this. No, it hasn't. Now, let me qualify that. <laughs> We have to receive, no, it hasn't, before you're going to receive the next part. No, sin has not separated us from God. Being of another kind is the separation. That is the separation. Okay? But then it is true that sin has separated us from God, isn't it? Because, because being of another kind is the sin. That's it. See, that's a discovery. That's a real discovery because it takes it off of the theology of, of sin and the whole plan of salvation is nothing more than to save us from sin. And, and, you know, every altar call is about sin and every sermon has to deal with everybody's sin because you were gone for a week and I have to lay it on you again. And, you know what I mean? And on and on and on. Oh, sin, sin, sin. And we never talk about the eternal plan, or we never talk about the, the reconciliation part of the plan of salvation. We don't, we don't see Christ in it. We see Christ at work in it, but not Christ in it. I'm not splitting hairs. <laughs> 
there's real truth in the difference of seeing Christ at work in the plan of salvation and seeing him as that plan. Yes. Do you have a, 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 a microphone up there on you at all? <clears throat> okay, are you going to talk more than a few sentences? Because if you are, I don't mind it. I have no problem, but come right down here. And that will give me a chance to drink and sit down. I'm just remembering something that you shared at some point, but um, some class a while back, I mean, years and years ago, um, it was shared that in Genesis, before sin, God had a desire to have one after his kind. And so you have this whole um, writing the Bible and instituting all this and that and this and that, and the whole book in all of history with mankind. And then in Revelation, as soon as he gets a bride after his kind, it's over. Because it started with that desire and it ended with him getting what he wanted. And the spirit and the bride say come. And it's the a end. Together. Yeah, they're reconciled. You know, we always say, spirit and the bride say come. Come back in the sky and catch everybody away. Well, I thought the bride was. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're the people we're supposed to be catching. <laughs> but they're saying come. So, I mean, yeah, who are you, who are you people sicking him on? You know? <laughs> Him on to go get, we're it, we're the bride. We're saying, let's come together in this oneness. Let, that is our, that is the fulfillment, participation into his life. Anyway, sorry. No, no, good I'm Lord. Sure Hallelujah. Um, and then it, it, it was also shared that the, rep, the, the bride that they showed as the revel uh, city. Sorry. The bride, <laughs> he shared it. Um, <clears throat> the bride that's the holy city in, in chapter 21, 22, she has the lamb in her, and everything that's defined as the, the consummation of the ages is that the lamb has a wife. It's not the wife of the Messiah or the wife of the preacher or the wife of, um, you know, the Lord, but that the kind that God is, which is defined as a lamb nature, has a wife, has a counterpart, and that is the holy city filled with his nature and then filled with him. Filled with the him. Lamb And then, it, and then the book ends, because that's what he wanted, and he got it. I'm done. Amen. Let's see. Let me just check something. All right, I'm going to end with, I, I want to reread that one last statement that I made and then read the other two and they're short and hopefully this is it. We say that sin has separated us from God but that separation is due to becoming another kind than what he is. The sin is first a nature and therefore a kind. And it's other. It's other than Jesus. It's not Jesus. Okay, well, we know it's not Jesus, but we say, well, it's me and I'm sinful. No, you're of another kind. I mean, yeah, you're, a sin, you're sinful and all that stuff too, but, but the real, the, remember, the, if you don't deal with the root, which was a kind change, you're only dealing with the fruit and you're just pulling stuff off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Jesus said, I've come here to lay the ax to the root. You know, this is, you know, it would be good if we just, like, read the Bible. Let's do it. Let's just start reading the Bible. Because, I mean, Jesus said all of that stuff, and he told us, and we know what, you know, or do we, you know? Okay. I said I wouldn't do too much talking. So sin is first a nature, and the kind, it produces sins. Therefore, sins is not and cannot be the real issue because that is fruit. We got to get to the thing that's causing the sins and yet the thing that's causing the sins is not as irritating to God as his, what he planned to be of his kind that change kinds on him. That's what's important to him. Maybe we're all upset about our sins. <laughs> Maybe we ought to be more upset about, you know, what we've left of the Lord. All right, let's pray. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and, and uh, 
we desire that your Holy Spirit will um, continue to touch our heart and our understanding, the eyes of our understanding. Lord, that you would give unto us not wisdom, lest we think that we're wise in our own conceits, but that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and the understanding of him. the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is his hope for calling us. Father, forgive me for my lack of ability to communicate your heart, but instead of being discouraged I thank you also for the preciousness of the Holy Spirit who will take us far beyond anything I could ever say or know and bring us into your very heart. For what man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of man and what man knoweth the things of God but the spirit of God. And then you said, but we have the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit, that's not something we have to gain. It's something we have to have open to us. So open unto us this heart of the Lord, this heart of a father, this heart of a son that would also seek a bride and awaken us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're dismissed.